Hey friends, tonight we are doing an organ workout. And that doesn't mean internal organs, we're talking about organistas, our organ players, pipe organs, any kind of organ you can think of where you play this way and your feet also play pedals, okay? So first things first, I wanna show you guys an implement that uh, I've talked about a few times, but I'm proud to be a representative of, and I actually get to use it. This is called an arm aid. It's not a torture device, I promise. But for musicians, it's, it was mostly used for rock climbers, but for most musicians, uh, I'm sorry, but for musicians, this is actually a lifesaver. Why? Because think about when you get a massage. Where is one area that's really difficult for you to address by yourself? Your forearms, right? This gets your forearms. In fact, their motive, their motive, <laughs> sorry y'all, their, uh, I drew a blank. They're saying, they're, <laughs> I'm gonna think of it as soon as I get done. They're saying is fix your own arms, fix your own forearms. And how you're gonna use it, I'm gonna show you real quick and then if you don't have one, that's fine. I'll put a link in the comments, but we'll get on with it. But I wanna show you what it'll do and why you need it. So what you do is you put this, you put your arms through here. We have the flat, uh, flat side on the other arm, and then you roll right through here. You're looking for tender points, okay? So you can see from the side, oh, right, right there. You can, you can twist the fleshy part of your arm right here. A lot of times, the muscles of your forearm get really tight, especially keyboard players, right? Especially woodwind players, anybody who uses their fingers or types an awful lot, right? So when you roll through here, oh, right there, you're looking for these tender points. You roll back and forth a few times, Find the most tender spot, like I got one right there. It goes down in my fingers. What you're gonna do is you're gonna bring your fingers, to, as you hold that spot, you're gonna bring your fingers together and stretch and hold and breathe, right? And you're gonna come back, do it again. Hold, so you're holding, you're moving your arm through that stretch, sorry, moving your wrist through that stretch while you're pressing on the tender point. And then feel free to move it around, okay? If you don't have one of these cool things, and you can adjust them, and you can add uh, and change out the implements. If you don't have one, you can use a, a lacrosse ball. You can use your fingers. The problem with using your fingers is if you're trying to release your forearms, and you use your forearms, well, then you do the other side. It just defeats the purpose. So you have to use a different implement to get your forearms, right? I haven't found anything else that, that does that. So uh, that's, I wanted to address that with you guys first. Um, we can talk about some stretches, but today I don't want to necessarily just address forearm issues. So um, all of this is going to be in my keyboard workout. Today what I mostly want to worry about is your body as a whole and how that works when it comes to your playing your instrument up high and also playing your instrument with both halves of your body. You guys are one of the few instrumentalists who actually do that. So we're going to talk about that. I'm going to back you up slightly because right now what we're going to do, we're going to do, you've seen me do a chest and front of shoulder stretch. Front of shoulder stretch this way, chest this way. I have a different way to do it. You can do this right on the bench, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to sit on the edge of a chair with your feet flat on the floor and wider than shoulder width apart. So way out, okay? You're going to put your hands with your thumbs on the inside of your thighs, okay? So you can turn this down a little bit. What you're gonna do, place your hands on the outside of your thighs, your thumbs on top and your fingers gripping your thighs, so like this, okay? And then what you're gonna do is I want you to drive your shoulder towards the ground. Once you feel a stretch here, then you can twist your head, but it's not about, you're not trying to lead this motion with your head. You're trying to come down and then twist. I feel that right there, okay? I'm gonna try on the left side because the flutist, this is the side that hurts. So you're gonna come down, drive that shoulder towards the ground, and then twist and look up. Take a couple of deep, deep breaths. So with your torso turned to the left, you're gonna rotate your head to the left, and then drop your chin and touch your collarbone with the upper left side of your chin, right? So you're gonna use your right hand pressing into your thigh to rotate you even more. So you're gonna use this hand to rotate you. This is not a passive, I'm just doing this. You use your hand 
to push you this way, drop your chin, rotate, okay? Hope that makes sense. So you're gonna do that, and I want you to hold that for 10, 20 seconds. Uh, I want you to, so you're gonna release the first hold, then back up, let your breathing come back to normal. That was a lot. I'm gonna do it again. Drop that chin, rotate up. Oh, feel that nice stretch through here, okay? If you don't want to do that on the bench, I have another option, but for today, that's the, the first one we're going to do, okay? Uh, after that, we need to mobilize this area. So say we've just stretched you out, and now you get a break off the bench, okay? We're going to go backstage, and this is what you're going to do. We're going to do some wall slot, some, some rotational stuff for up, up here. It's going to look like this. What you're going to do is going to come right up against a wall. Oh, sorry. Right up against a flat wall. Okay, arms are at 90 degrees. I want you to rotate up and down. Just up and down. And that's it. If that feels tight or doesn't feel good, by all means, don't do it. If it feels too easy, you're gonna come up and rotate. Push your arms back into the wall, okay? Relax. Rotate up, push back, pushing your elbows into the wall, and relax. If that's too easy, here we go. Rotate up, push back, push up, and come down, okay? One more time, rotate. Push your shoulders, elbows into the wall, and push up, okay? Some people call those wall angels. I'm gonna call those wall slides. All right, another version we can do is called a wall cobra. That's what I'm gonna call it. A cobra looks like this. You're squeezing the bottom of your shoulder blades together, okay? We're going to use the wall for extra support and extra resistance. So, you're back up against the wall. I want you to rotate your palms so your palms are forward. And then push your palms into the, sorry, push your hands into the wall. Rotate those shoulders down. Squeeze back and use the wall for that resistance, okay? Three, two, one. Relax. You remember to breathe. And by the way, Levi has decided to make another appearance today. All right, so... <laughs> you see a tail, it's his. So you rotate back, squeeze, and come down. If this doesn't feel good, you can try it this way. Hi, buddy. You're going to rotate those shoulders, squeeze back, like you're trying to squeeze the bottom of your shoulder blades together, okay? And we're going to do those 15 times, 10 to 15 times, okay? Just like that. Another thing we need to do, something called chin tucks. And the reason for that <clears throat> is because when you guys play, think, you're up here, you're up here, you're down here, you're doing all these things, but you're also either looking right ahead and your head wants to go where your eyes go. And when you're, when you're depending on the organ you're at, your music might be above eye level, right? So then your head does this business and juts forward. So what I want you to do is something called a chin tuck. What you're gonna do is you're gonna tuck your chin down slightly. That doesn't mean this way. You're gonna tuck down slightly Pretend your, uh, pretend your chin is on rails, okay? It's gonna go straight back and relax. Tuck, straight back. So it looks like this. Tuck, straight back, relax. Tuck, straight back. Do that 10, 15 times. You can do this on the bench as well, okay? So one more thing for an activation that we've done. So what we've done so far, we've stretched this way. We've mobilized. Okay, and now we're doing some activation stuff for the weaker muscles, the weaker muscles here. And now we also need to work on your serratus anterior. That's this muscle here. So if you grab um, <clears throat> on, a, on a, like a ripped bodybuilder or a really muscular individual, you'll see these finger looking muscles right here. That's called your serratus anterior, your SA for short. I'm gonna show you how you can activate it. It's not one of the easiest things to do. So this is a, easy-ish way to do it, okay? So again, you need a wall. With me, we're gonna use, well, we'll use the door. Once you put your hands directly underneath your shoulders, sink your shoulders, and then push away. Sink, push, okay? Don't let your back arch, so keep your belly button in, your butt tucked and squeeze, sink, push. You can also do this on the ground if that feels better. Okay, now we have, Levi, you're gonna have to move. So, that's what's going on there. I'm gonna have to move this and he's not gonna be happy about it. Okay, we have a couple other things left to do. 
we've got, this is all for your core, okay? And your core is really important, obviously, as an organist, right? So what we have left, we have a, we'll do it this way. We have a bear crawl hold. Doesn't mean you need to do a bear crawl, because you don't. But you're gonna get into a bear crawl position, all fours, okay? You're gonna lift up, I'm gonna have you touch here, here, without moving anything, okay? Move you this way, so I can see my notes. Thanks for joining me tonight, guys. There we are. All right, so bear crawl hold looks like this. So I'm in all fours, right? What I want you to do, you're gonna bring your toes up, lift. Okay, that's, that's the hold. So it's not up here, it's not here, it's not here. You're only gonna come about an inch or so off the ground. If this is difficult to do, by all means, just do the hold. If it's not difficult, we're gonna add the touch. So the hold looks like this. Come in and hold. Keep your back flat, that's it. If that's easy, it's not so easy to explain all this while I'm talking and doing it at the same time. So if that's easy, you're gonna do this. You're gonna touch here, touch here. Looks like this. <laughs> I try to talk and breathe and exercise at the same time. So I want you to lift up, hold, touch, touch. Also, don't wear socks. Touch, <laughs> touch. And there goes Levi. Okay, so point is, you don't want your hips to do this kind of business. So when you're coming up and you touch, you don't want any kind of flexion in your back. Pretend like you have a glass of water on your back, and when you go to touch side to side, also don't wear socks on a smooth surface, go slide like that. But when you go to touch, pretend like you've got that glass of water and you don't want it to move, okay? So after that, we're gonna do something called a, uh, if you can't do that actually, hey bud, if you can't do that, here's your other option. We have what's called a dead bug, and you've probably seen this before. Um, there's lots of different variations of this. I'm gonna give you the basic version. You can see the other variations in my other videos. But what I want you to do is you're gonna drive your low back into the ground, okay? Very important, there should be no space. Put your hand in your low back, smash into the ground. You shouldn't have any movement here, okay? So hold it there, or you can hold something else. Make sure you hold it there, lift your legs, lift your arms. Come out, you're gonna touch, touch. Notice I'm not extending my leg. You're just gonna touch your heel to the ground at a time, okay? The whole time, you're trying to keep your low back in touch with the ground, okay? So you're going to do that for 30 seconds or so. After that, then you're going to do that in case you can't do the bear crawl touch, okay? That's your other option. Your last thing is a one leg bridge. Why? Because your glutes need some work. You're sitting on that bench an awful lot. Your glutes don't get a lot of work. Your sit bones are balancing you fine, but your booty needs some help. When your rear end works well, when those muscles are activated, when they function properly, the rest of your body works well. You don't have any kind of weird pelvic tilts going on. You have function all the way up and down the chain, okay? So if your glutes work, you work. This is why we do this, okay? So I want you to draw your belly button in. Not just the pelvic tilt, but draw your belly button in. Now squeeze your butt, lift up. You can't see this, can you? I'll give you another option, there we go. So, we're gonna do a one leg version. This is, these are, these are bridges. They look like this. You're gonna draw your belly button in, squeeze, lift up. Notice I'm not way up here, okay? You're just trying to go from knees to shoulder. You're gonna squeeze the whole time, give me a little bit of a posterior pelvic tilt, squeeze and come up, just a little bit, okay? If you can do this and you feel like this is really activated and everything is fine and these are too easy, Perfect, here's your variation. I want you to lift a leg, keep this foot close to your butt. Draw in again, drive through, lift up, and back down. These are one-legged versions. Do 10 to 15 on each side, just like that. If you feel this here, bring your feet close to your butt. If you feel it here, make sure you're pushing through your heels and bring it close to your butt. That should be everything, and 
Uh, feel free to do these. If you can't do all of them, do what you can, but try to do them in order. So you wanna do a stretch, a mobilization, an activation, and a strength. If you can only do a few, do the stretch and do the, mo do the uh, activation. You don't have to do all four, but try to do them in that order. Thank you guys for joining me tonight.